Hello, I'm Alon Burstein, visiting assistant professor in the Department of Political Science and Israel Institute fellow with the University of California, Irvine, here bringing you the summary of the last 24 hours of the Israel-Hamas war. It is going to the evening of December 22nd, 2023 in the United States, the morning of December 23rd, 2023 in the Middle East. Starting with the hostage situation, the Israeli Defense Forces, the IDF, are now confirming that another hostage that is being held by Hamas in the Gaza Strip is confirmed dead. This brings the number of those who are confirmed dead and held, their bodies still held in the Gaza Strip to 25 out of the roughly 129 hostages that are remain in the Gaza Strip. Regarding the negotiations about a future hostage exchange, El Ahbar, which is a Lebanese news outlet affiliated with Hezbollah, reported today that the political leadership of Hamas, this refers to Ismail Ghaniya and the external leadership, not the ones in the Gaza Strip, instructed the Qatari envoys that they are not to negotiate with Israel anything other than a complete ceasefire, i.e. an end to the war. This, uh, this uh, relates to Hamas's stance in the last couple of days in which they have stated that there will be no more deals or hostage release in exchange for a truce and the release of Palestinian prisoners. They are only willing to release hostages in exchange for a complete end to the war, a term that Israel has outright rejected. Contrary to this, the Saudi Ilaf network they reported that despite the escalatory rhetoric, there is indication that Hamas may be leading towards a deal that will come to fruition in the coming weeks. The report cited, among others, the fact that Ismail Haniya, the leader of Hamas, is still in Egypt and meeting with Intelligence Minister Abbas Kamel, and in addition that the Palestinian Islamic Jihad leader, Ziad Nahale, is due to arrive in Egypt next week, as well as other different indications that the Ilaf network is stating, despite the escalatory rhetoric, Hamas will likely look to climb down from the tree and possibly accept a truce and a release of heavier Palestinian prisoners prisoners in exchange for the release of hostages likely in the coming weeks. This remains to be seen. Moving on to the ongoing fighting in the Gaza Strip, there were rockets and mortars today sent from the Gaza Strip towards the southern parts of Israel, although substantially less than the previous days. Rockets targeted primarily, primarily the areas surrounding the Gaza Strip, specifically Kisufim and Nachaloz. Regarding the fighting in the Gaza Strip, there are reports from all over the Strip, the north, the center, and the south. In the northern parts of the Gaza Strip, the IDF reported that it carried out substantial operations, operations in the Darj Tufahn area. This is a neighborhood adjacent to Sajaiya, which the IDF states it has completely taken over, aiming to solidify the control in the north. In Gaza City itself, the IDF took over the Hamas Isa outpost as one of the outposts that remained in the hearts of Gaza City. Following intensive gun battles that include Hamas ambushes emerging from tunnels, the IDF managed to uncover tunnel entrances that led to a network of hundreds of meters of tunnels that functioned as an underground outpost, including different weapon storages, as well as sleeping rooms, communications arrays, etc. The IDF reported that most of that tunnel is now destroyed. In Beit Hanun, also in the northern areas of the Gaza Strip, the IDF took over the Kasbah, that is the main center of the city, after intensive battle that involved substantial aerial bombings as well. The substantial weaponry was uncovered, including guns, explosives, mortars, uniforms, bulletproof vests, as well as lots of other military equipment. There was also several tunnel entrances discovered, with the largest one leading towards a school in the Kasbah area. In addition, it was reported today that in the, the Al-Shati refugee camp, this is a refugee camp in the northeastern parts of the Gaza Strip that the IDF took over several weeks ago already, the IDF is now carrying out what they call targeted raids. These are raids that are now based on intelligence, targeting specific sites. In this case, it was reports of a target against the school, which the IDF raided, that were being used as Hamas hideouts. So this is ongoing activity going on in the Al-Shati refugee camp. In addition, in the Rimal area in Gaza City, the IDF reported that it has achieved operational control of the neighborhood. Rimal is one of the most strategic neighborhoods in Gaza City. Yesterday, it was reported reported that the IDF took over the main Hamas headquarters in the G entire Gaza Strip that was located in Rimal. In following all of these activities in the northern parts of the Gaza Strip, the IDF spokesperson today stated that the IDF has almost achieved complete operational control of the northern parts of the Gaza Strip. Moving on to the central parts of the Gaza Strip, the IDF today re announced officially that it is expanding its activity b southward beyond the northern parts, beyond Wadi Aza. So while the IDF has carried out operations already, substantial operations, in the southern parts of the Gaza Strip, it has not actually gone southward from north to south. What has happened is the IDF took over the northern parts of the Gaza Strip, then it invaded the Hanunis area, the southern parts of the Gaza Strip, from the east from Israel, still in the middle of the Gaza Strip, the central parts of the strategic city of Deir el-Balach, as well as different refugee camps such as al Burej and Nusirat, as well as other different smaller towns. The IDF is now indicating that it is intending to push further down south from the north and target the central areas of the Gaza Strip as well. Specifically, IDF spokesperson in Arabic today called on Palestinian civilians in the al Burej refugee camp to begin evacuating, and the IDF map that was published also indicated that civilians in the Nusirat refugee camp, specifically in the areas of Badr neighborhood, Northern Beach, Al-Nuzha, Al-Zahara, Al-Burak, Al-Radwa, and Al-Safa, also are all to evacuate towards Deir al-Balakh, which is a city further down south, the central parts of the Gaza Strip. According to the UN, this area covers roughly 15% of the central parts of the Gaza Strip. 
prior to the war it housed 90,000 Palestinians and right now it also has shelters and you, the, the UN estimates are housing 61,000 internally displaced Palestinians from the north. All of these are now being ordered to evacuate further down south towards the Diri Barakh area. This is a strong indication that the IDF plans to invade these areas in the coming days. Also in the central parts of the Gaza Strip in the Jahar Adik area, the IDF reported that it covered a big weapons cache including long-range rockets and missiles. Moving further south in the Gaza Strip, there's ongoing fighting in Khan Yunus and substantial light bombs were seen in the areas of Rafah as well. In addition, al Arab al-Jadid reported of an attack that occurred against a car in Rafah with three Palestinians killed and six injured. The profile of this attack suggests a target assassination. This is not like the usual bombings that the IDF has been carrying out. This targeted a specific car. However, no details were available as of the time of recording this. In addition, the Gazan Shahab Network, which is a Hamas affiliate, reported today that Lieutenant Colonel Mahdi al-Akil of Hamas, who is the chief of police in Han Yunus, was assassinated in an attack against his house in the Ma neighborhood in Han Yunus. In other reports, there were substantial naval bombings today carried out against different Hamas positions along the coastal line, not reported where this was exactly in the Gaza Strip. Regarding casualties, four IDF soldiers were reported killed in the last 24 hours. Some of these occurred in the north of the Gaza Strip, some of these occurred in the south, and 23 were reported injured. This brings the total number of IDF soldiers that have been killed in the Gaza Strip since the invasion began to 142. The Palestinian Health Ministry today reported that 20,057 Palestinians have been killed since the war began, and 53,320 have been injured. This confirms the report yesterday of the Palestinian Communications Ministry that, that now shows that up close to 1% of the entire population of the Gaza Strip has been killed since the war began. The Palestinian Health Ministry also reported that upwards of 80% of Palestinians have now become internally displaced within the Gaza Strip. Moving on to the humanitarian situation today, the IDF announced a four-hour humanitarian pause in the western areas of the Rafah neighborhood. In addition, additional corridors were opened for two-way traffic between Rafah, Khan Yunus, and Deir al-Barakh. Presumably, this is also to facilitate the evacuation of those civilians that have been called upon to evacuate from the central parts of the Gaza Strip. According to the, to the IDF instructions, those in the areas of Abu Rajan and Nusirat are to evacuate towards Deir al-Barakh. However, they are also permitted to travel further down south towards Rafah. UNICEF today stated that children under the age of five in Gaza are in acute danger of malnourishment and starvation, adding situations only due to worsen as winter progresses. The report also stated that there are upwards of 300,000 children in the Gaza Strip under the age of five, and every family is likely affected. Regarding the entrance of humanitarian trucks to the Gaza Strip, the only agency to put out the number of humanitarian trucks entered in the last 24 hours is the Palestinian Red Crescent. They reported 70 trucks carrying food, water, and medical supplies entered the Gaza Strip in the last 24 hours. They stated that these only entered through the Rafah crossing, not mentioning the Karim Shalom crossing, unclear if any trucks entered from Israel directly. Moving on to the West Bank, there was an incident today that occurred in a checkpoint in northern West Bank in which after the Israeli police forces stopped a vehicle and tried to search it. There were confrontations and it escalated to what the IDF is calling a ramming attack. According to different video footage, what happened is during the escalation, a Palestinian came and unhooked the handbrake of a car that then rolled into a police officer and managed to injure her. In return, the, uh, the police force fired upon a Palestinian. There's one Israeli police officer that's lately injured, one Palestinian is injured, and two were arrested in this event. In regarding other IDF activity throughout the West Bank, there was substantial IDF activity reported in the Dora village near Hebron, in Beit Rima, and in the Torah village. Eleven Palestinians are reported arrested, as well as substantial weaponry that was confiscated. Moving on to the northern parts of Israel, southern parts of Lebanon, there were substantial escalations throughout the last 24 hours. A barrage of 20 rockets was fired from Lebanon into the western Galilee. These are specifically the Menara area, as well as mortars towards Metula. There were other border incidents reported, including gun battles within IDF outposts or towards IDF outposts. One soldier is reported killed from that mortar fire, and others are injured. There were major IDF retaliations throughout the day. These targeted the Hezbollah infrastructure and different military compounds, with additional air raids were reported in the Labona village in southern Lebanon. Hezbollah announced that two of its operatives were killed, bringing the total number of operatives that Hezbollah is stating were killed since the war began to 121. In other news, the New York Times they reported that there are secret negotiations going on under U.S. auspices between Israel, the government of Lebanon, and Hezbollah emissaries, trying to avoid an escalation into all-out war. According to the report, the United States is stating to all sides that war right now is inevitable and that that is going to ignite the entire region, and thus all sides need to de-escalate. The report suggests that both Israel and the Lebanese government have an interest in Hezbollah being forced to move further north, and that the
the U.S. is trying to develop a long-term agreement that will allow Israeli civilians have been evacuated from the northern parts of Israel and Lebanese civilians have been evacuated from the southern parts of Lebanon to return to their homes. The report suggests that Israel and the United States are trying to agree between them what is the distance that Hezbollah will be required to move to the northern parts, uh, to move north from the border with Israel, and that the United States, as far as it's concerned, thinks that the Lebanese army should be the sole force in the border, and Israel, in turn, is not opposed to having other international forces on the border as well. Moving on to the regional developments, the Islamic resistance in Iraq, which is one of the Iranian militias in Iraq, put out a statement today that several days ago it attacked the Karish gas mining area in the Mediterranean. This is a, an area that is being mined by Israel after substantial gas re- reservoirs have been found. According to the Islamic resistance in Iraq, there were direct hits that occurred in this attack. This is not confirmed by any other report. Other news, the Wall Street Journal they reported that an Iranian spy ship is stationed in the Red Sea and is transmitting live intelligence to the Houthis, and this is what's enabling them to carry out their attacks against different ships. The report also states that the United States has asked Israel to allow the United States and the International Coalition to retaliate against the Houthis rather than letting Israel do it, as the United States suspects that if Israel openly retaliates against the Houthis, this is also going to lead to an all-out escalation in the entire region. Moving on to some of the political and general trends that occurred in the last 24 hours. After days of postponing a negotiation, the UN Security Council today passed a resolution relating to the war. The resolution calls, among other things, for substantial increase in humanitarian aid to flow into the Gaza Strip, humanitarian corridors to be opened and respected by all sides, working towards the establishment of a two-state solution, and the unconditional release of all hostages that were taken in the war. The U.S. vetoed a Russian proposal that would add a call to immediate ceasefire into this resolution. The resolution passed with 13 voting in favor, and Russia and the United States both abstaining. The sticking point in the last several days has been that the U.S. agreed with Israel that Israel has to maintain the sole inspection right of any aid coming into the Gaza Strip, while the original UN Security Council resolution called for the establishment of an international UN body that would be made up of countries that are uninvolved in the war that would have sole inspection rights. The final resolution does call for the establishment of an international body of countries that are unrelated to the war. However, according to the resolution, this body is only going to facilitate expediting more aid entering the Gaza Strip, but sole inspection rights will remain within Israel. Responding to this, Hamas condemned the UN Security Council resolution, stating that the United States had completely emptied it of anything substantial and that it does not meet the needs of Gaza. In turn, the Palestinian Authority foreign minister stated that the resolution is a step in the right direction. In other news, the Palestinian Authority chairman Mahmoud Abbas had a conversation today with Russian President Putin in which he discussed the need for an immediate ceasefire and coordinated a potential visit of Palestinian Authority chairman Abbas to Russia in the coming weeks. In addition, as part of their growing alliance, Iranian foreign minister today spoke with Russian foreign minister. They also discussed the regional developments and the growing relations and military ties between the two countries. Other news, the EU announced it is going to transfer 130 million euros to the Palestinian Authority in aid money. This is money that was frozen on October 7th, and the EU established a committee to confirm that the money does not go to support terrorism. That committee has concluded that, in fact, the money does not go to support terrorism, and thus 130 million euros are going to be transferred to the Palestinian Authority. Finally, the New York Times today published a report estimating that in the first six weeks of the war, Israel frequently dropped bombs weighing over one ton in the southern parts of the Gaza Strip, areas that were at that time defined safe zones. The report indicates that forensic experts, along with satellite images, have looked at the different crates that were formed by the different bombs and confirmed that the IDF made what they call frequent use, citing over 200 cases in which such bombs were used. The IDF responded, stating that Israel's current priority is destroying Hamas, and questions like this will be looked into later. That is my report for the last 24 hours. I'll be back tomorrow.